Hey everybody, I have been offline for the last couple of weeks as I have been just working a lot and the last two weeks prior to recording this video, I've been on vacation uh, on a road trip through Kelowna and Nelson, BC. And as a sidebar, my heart goes out to the people of uh, Kelowna right now. Uh, it's like a second home to me. I have taken my family there. Uh, every year for the past seven years and uh, I'd move there uh, I'd move there in a heartbeat if I had the same kind of job opportunities that I do here in the lower mainland so with that being said in this video we are going to be talking about how important it is to have uh, sector cover call ETFs in your portfolio if you are an income investor or someone who uh, invest in cover call ETFs, or maybe you're newer and looking to get some inspiration, some ideas about how to build um, a cover call ETF portfolio. Well, have no fear, I got you covered in this video, and we are gonna be discussing, not only in this video, but actually going forward, um, individual sector cover call ETFs and their importance to your portfolio and which ones you should get into. There's a million different sectors. Not all of them are as crucial as um, ones like technology and financials and energy and utility. It's just a matter of what kind of weighting you put that in your portfolio and to um, and to what kind of importance do they have when you are looking at investing in, say, um, say geography allocation towards the United States or geography allocation in Canada. So the first one we're going to start off with is technology because technology is what drives everything. It is by far the most important sector in our economy. So with understanding that technology has a, a crucial role. How can we invest in this as income investors? Do we make short-term plays, long-term plays? If you are someone hoping to get a little more yield out of your portfolio, then consider uh, these next few videos that we're gonna be talking about. So in this video, I'm gonna discuss which one uh, I would pick as the one to own. So in this fund, we're looking at four different uh, cover call ETFs with very different strategies. We'll go over all of them, and then we'll also look at a head-to-head -head fund comparison that looks at all the uh, fund breakdown from the inception dates to um, management fees to the yield to the kinds of funds that they all hold okay so starting off we're going to go with zwt which is by bemo it writes um it has 50 percent coverage over the whole fund and they typically do out of the money calls okay next up we have htae which is a harvest fund the harvest tech achievers um, enhanced fund. So this is a fund that holds one ETF and that ETF is HTA, the Hamilton uh, Harvest, ooh, careful there, Harvest Technology Achievers Fund, focusing on, of course, technology. Where does the E come in? It's for the leverage component. This fund uh, amplifies the performance, both price-wise and yield-wise, by 25%, meaning that if you have $4,000 invested in HTAE, it's gonna act like a $5,000 investment. Uh, TXF is by CI Financial. They usually write 25% coverage on their, on, all, on their holdings and their moneyness is at the money. Okay, and then QQCC uh, is just a fund by Horizons. They replicate the NASDAQ 100. I believe this one holds like the index. I believe. Now you're gonna see that this one has uh, just a flat squiggly line. It has done much better than that. I don't know why that line, I've tried refreshing it and doing all kinds of different things to try to, I don't know, trick seeking alpha into uh, showing like a different version of QQC. It's done much better than what you're seeing that. So un unfortunately it's, it's gonna, it's, I, uh, for the purposes of this video, it's gonna kind of taint the performance of, uh, QQCC, but um, it has done much better than that. It's probably more in the ballpark of 
and we're also looking at total returns by the way so price action and dividends included so it's probably like i said in the sort of 35 percent range total return to date um and then if you kind of just look at the funds uh, over the course of this year to date chart you can see that htae has actually seems like it's been the top performer with the leverage component um I'm not surprised by that. I would have expected ZWT maybe to maybe to outpace that just because of it's not as aggressive with their cover call writing than the others. But again, with HTAE, um, what goes up really well also goes down probably a lot faster, and you can kind of see that in. Uh, the past, uh, well, at least for the month of August, where this weakness has been seen. Um, and that 25% leverage amplifies, yes, the, um, the gains and also the losses. Now, as of these fun funds, I actually own none of them. I am looking at owning a technology fund. The fund that I'm actually wanting to invest in uh, is HTAE for price performance if from what I've seen from this year with uh, technology cover call funds and the way that they are constructed I believe even if I wanted to only hold HTAE for say a year or two it probably has the best uh, growth potential um, nothing wrong with these other funds they you can as you can see they've kind of all kind of perform fairly similarly uh, was ZWT being probably the less the least volatile and you can see year to date um, that it holds the best total return performance now let's actually look at the sort of the head-to-head -head comparisons of these funds we can see uh, the the management companies we can see that these are sector funds you'll see that this is it doesn't say it's an uh, it, it's not a sector but the nasdaq 100 50 it's known as like a growth index because of uh, because it's overweight in technology uh, over half the index is in technology you can see here that for htae it's kind of alternative equity flow. it is a sector fund it the, it just gets this kind of kind of you know word salad title because um because it is an etf that holds uh, a sector etf even though you know for our sake it is a sector etf okay and then next up we have this um, management expense ratio now for cover call etfs 0 0.27 0 0.71 0 0.9 is probably on the regular this is probably more on the higher end uh, but then we have this sort of this one that obliterates all of them this 1.92 so for those out there who might be thinking well Jordan why would you invest in something with such a high management fee the reason is simple a lot of this is going to be the leverage cost and if you're willing to get um, if you're willing to get 25% extra uh, price performance and yield and with the leverage costs only being you know it's okay well it's like a percent higher than this horizons fund and only 1.2 percent higher than this if you were let's put it this way if you were to right now go uh, apply for a heloc or you uh, <laughs> use a credit card or you go get a car loan what are you paying or a mortgage for for instance like the probably the lowest borrowed money you can get right now through a mortgage a variable rate is probably in the what like what high five i mean and we you might be dreaming if you're getting somewhere just below six percent okay but and for this you're getting borrowed money at at one percent look harvest has been around since i believe 2009 these people they have friends in high places they know how to negotiate where you and i have no hope in that but the fact that we have access to um, that kind of borrowed money now I am not one for um, credit card debt I'm not one for car loans I will never have a car loan I've had a car loan and it sucked especially on a $30,000 vehicle learn my lesson the hard way it'll never happen again okay credit card debt again never um, but when we when we talk about um, 
borrowed money on assets, I'm a little bit more friendlier to that, um, especially if that asset can kind of back it up. Um, so that is just a consideration when introducing leverage, something to at least be mindful of and kind of aware of, um, not just, oh, you're just paying more. Like there's a little bit more to it than just that. Okay, now when we look at uh, total assets under management, Horizons is the lowest. Um, I'm not thrilled with the, say, 26 million under management. Now with Canadian funds, uh, cover call ETF funds, they aren't like, um, sort of bigger ETFs. Like, let's just take VU, for example, by Vanguard, which is just a, a plain vanilla S&P 500 uh, ETF. It has like a trillion dollars or some ridiculous number uh, under management. Like, you're going to have no liquidity issues with this. There is a potential with all of these that you could have liquidity issues, especially these sort of double digit funds. Um, in my mind, like this, this one by CI, uh, 619 like that's that's for the Canadian market in uh, a neat well not as niche but it's certainly becoming a lot more mainstream the whole cover called ETF space a lot more mainstream uh, starting to be included in a lot more portfolios these days uh, this is probably more in the good good range of assets under management 26 small could you have liquidity issues? Personally, I've never had liquidity issues with any fund that I've invested in where I couldn't get, I couldn't buy the fund or sell the fund. I've, I, they've all been settled. So, uh, and I haven't personally seen any issues and don't know of any um, issues with that. Could it happen? Sure. So total fund holdings, again, Harvest has one fund, HTA, and the second component is the leverage, which isn't a fund. It's just, it's just, it's a bit of a misnomer. It's just that is the other component of that fund. Uh, then we have BMO 69 um, positions, which we'll get to down below. And then we have CI with 56. Um, and then Horizons, it holds an index and maybe some mm, treasure. Uh, well, I could be wrong. Uh, we'll get to it. So maybe I want to say treasuries are part of it. I think if it holds one. Anyway, we'll get to it. Well, I'm curious to see what are these four funds that it's alluding to. Um, I don't know. I said treasury. I think that, that's more of a U.S. Um, cover call uh, single uh, or I would say cover call all ETFs that hold, say, one stock also typically hold treasuries because they can't, there's there's some sort of legal jargon where they can't hold, um, you know, too much of just one thing. Uh, so I wonder if, we'll get to it, but I wonder if that has maybe similar parameters. CI and, um, and Horizons are the two oldest funds at 12 years old. These other ones are... Uh, Harvest being the, the the newest one, and this BMO fund being a couple years old, and then of course you got a variety in in yield. Horizons probably the best yield of all four. This one, is, it hasn't been around for twelve months. So we don't get the the trailing twelve month um, in, info. Uh, as I was talking about with ZWT, the BMO fund, uh, typically they're. Uh, Cover call ETFs are to, uh, lower, but um, you potentially get more. You get more growth, so they they try to really strike a balance between uh, the growth of the fund and the actual yield. Uh, you will certainly get more yield versus just uh, just a plain sector ETF that that covers, say, technology. Um, but they want if you are concerned about growth, well, you'll still get some of that as well. And then CI, sort of middle of the pack with 8.47%, which is great. Um, again, just what suits your needs, right? Uh, if, are you going all out on yield or do you want a little bit more growth? Uh, again, for me, it's HTAE, which probably sits currently more in the 9% range. Again, with more depression in the market, uh, then I will start looking at um, loading up. But if, if the market all of a sudden dropped by... 30% HTA for me personally, that is like, I'm going, I'm going bonkers on HTA. Um, and okay, now let's get down to performance. 
We can see all these sort of total return performances. I don't believe these are up to date. Uh, HTAE is looking like the best one of all of them. Remember how I was talking about Horizons? Like you can see that it's in that 30% range uh, and not what we, the, the, the slight squiggly line. It's, you know, it's not a couple months old. It's, you know, it's 13 years old, but perhaps the fun, Maybe maybe there is a tweak in the strategy that I'm just not aware of, but nonetheless, it's in the 30 to 35% total return to date. Uh, stocks, 100%, 100%, short-term reserves. Okay, so maybe there are some treasury stuff. Uh, well, we're about to get to it. Uh, you can see this one at 120%. That's just because of the leverage component. I'm not sure why it's... 121 shouldn't it be 125 because of 25 percent leverage htae ever like 100 percent of the portfolios united states bmo the technology basically it's all the united states ci 100 percent coverage in the united states whereas uh again mostly united states everything else is just negligible okay then we got some just Again, uh, regular you know price to book ratios, price to earnings ratios. Uh, not often you'll see this. Uh, I know TD offers um, some decent in info on this. Uh, the technology sector is probably right in line, like in the third, <laughs> in the in the thirty times earnings range. Uh, whereas, as maybe a comparison, S and P is probably I would say probably between. 15 and 20. I don't know the exact number. It was probably in that range. 15 is probably too low. It's probably closer to 20. Okay, and then we have top holdings. So this is probably the next maybe important segment. We can see that uh, HTAE has that um, uh, that leverage component and it holds the Harvest Tech Achievers Fund. BMO holds a lot of the you know, the, the, the staple technology um, stocks being Amazon, Apple. You know, uh, right now they're calling them the Magnificent Seven, the Magnificent Seven that have basically held up this market because without those seven, uh, like the ones you see here, uh, then the market's probably flat. Uh, then we got CI, which if you compare it to nothing is above 4.5%, Okay, so the deal with this Horizons fund is that they write options on an ETF. So the so the QQCC is is an ETF that holds an ETF just like just like this one over here. Okay, an ETF that holds an ETF. This one has leverage, or this one holds the ETF with leverage. This one holds the ETF with the option contracts, basically as, as a segment of QQCC. So they write um, options contract, or they write call options on this single ETF themselves. Okay, again, holding the NASDAQ 100. Uh, this video was certainly longer than I would l usually like it to be, but um, hopefully that gave you all some uh, decent inspiration ideas of how to attack this sector. Um, what fund are you going to be investing in, if any of these at all? Um, please let me know in the comments down below. And if you like what you saw, then please, as always, do the cliche thing and smash all the buttons of the like and subscribe. Variety, it does help out this channel a great deal. So please do so. And I will see you all in the next video.